So drums, this is a Yamaha custom recording kit. We spent a good bit of time tuning them to this part of the room so the toms could be nice and thundery. We've got a tiny bit of dampening on the toms. We do, we're currently doing two tracks. On the first track, we had a bit of foam on because it was resonating and we didn't want that low rumble. Over to the snare drum. This is a vintage Haben Vibrasonic snare drum with a Remo Ambassador coated head and big fat snare drum on top. This is the standard house kit here at ARC. So, you know, it's um, same with the snare. This is one of our snares. Um, we actually have the full um, vintage Heyman Vibrasonic to go with it. There are a lot of dark arts about where you put the drums in the room. Well, for me, it's all about is the drummer happy? Because if they're happy, they're going to play better. And that's the aim of the game, really. Okay, so the mic setup here, we have um, some Coles 3048s um, in a Blumline kind of thing. Um, again, we're in a lovely big live room, we want to capture some of that as well. Um, vibe of the song is very trashy, so we have a Ringo's D19C. Um, we're not actually using it, it was just there to sort of see how it worked, but um, Coles just seem to be doing the job here. I'll just go around the kit while I'm here. So we have a Bayer dynamic thing on the hats. We are being brave, some would say, um, to use some nice KM86s on these two toms here. Rather than going for absolute rejection, we're allowing some spill. We have this Pluso number to follow on the big floor tom. It's like a valvey small condenser KM84-ish looking thing. And um, on the kick drum, we have a D25 um, on the front, um, sort of taking the in and then a vintage FET 47 doing that vintage FET 47 outside the kick drum thing that everyone does, including a me. Here we are at the main event of the snare drum and um, we are using a Austrian Audio OC818, which is um, their version of the AKG C414. Um, we've set it to a cardioid polar pattern um, so we can get some rejection from the tom and the hats because if you know your polar patterns, rejection's here. Pretty close, pointing to the centre. Um, and um, we have an SM57 doing its SM57 thing underneath. So that's all just pretty much, pretty standard um, mic placement for a drum kit. Except I wouldn't be here doing a video if that's all we did now, would we? Do you see what we did there? We did one of those cheesy cuts where we went from there to here. On the floor here, we have a Turner Crystals um, 22X. It looks pretty cool and vibey. The technique come from Cameron himself. Um, one of the benefits I have being in a, is being in a great studio like this is that I get to work with some really talented producers and get to sort of see how they do things and um, when I kind of quizzed them on well why are we just randomly placing a microphone on the floor um, he just said he did it once he just placed it somewhere forgot about it and um, and it sounded great but then when he actually thought well you know I'm a proper engineer I shouldn't really be doing stuff like that and um, put it on a stand and found that it actually didn't sound very good at all so Randomness is the key sometimes, and we placed it down, sounded good, and that's why it's there in that position. And over in the centre of the drum kit, we have an STC thing, exact name and model will be in the show notes, um, pointing here at the snare drum, doing that sort of mid-kit thing, 
that sounds good because that's what we're going for. Um, and it just sort of allows us to sort of get that real trashy, allows us to slam and get real trashy, aggressive drum tones that um, these mics don't, these mics are here to just give us a definition. This has given us our vibe. Again, trashy, name of the game. So rather than using some nice fancy AEA um, ribbons, we have gone for the nice rock and roll Sontronic Sigma 2s in a whatever configuration that is. Um, it's basically, with them being figure of eight, they are doing that as the mic rocks slowly above my head. Um, so doing that, facing out that way. Um, and um, we'll get more into this when we're in the control room, but these are being expanded on the SSL, um, triggered by the snare, so we can get that sort of nice rhythmic room effect going on in time with the drums. Um, and that's pretty much it really for what we're doing in here. It's not super creative, but just enough to get a rock and roll vibe going really. And that's about it.